Hey there, tonight's shave is going to feature the Nasset blade inside of my dart razor. It has 11 shaves on it, so we are going to put the 12th on it tonight. The soap is going to be Williams. I've shredded it. It's a hard puck soap, so you can shred it and put it into whatever container you want. I have a small four inch dish, I mean bowl that I'll use. Uh, here is the dart from Blackland Razors. This is the machined or matte version and uh, it's wonderful. I've been really enjoying it. And here is the uh, uh, whipped dog bore brush. As you can see the splay is getting bigger and bigger and um, the uh, handle is from Shave Forge. This is the purple, uh, kind of the purple one. You can see they did put throw some odd bits in there of green and brown kind of weird but still pretty nice pretty nice looking but mainly the ergonomics i really like it fits really well in my my big hands and so the first thing we're going to do with this guy put him inside of a little cup some people you know you generally need to get your bores wet before you shave i, I like to soak mine all right the, uh, the dart is ready. I've already uh, have the blade loaded in there. Um, over the last few shaves, it has started to leave some of the neck hairs right here, which is my hardest area to get. Um, the first maybe seven shaves, it got these without a problem in just the first three passes. And uh, lately I have, I've been having a problem getting them uh, cut flush, even with touch-up passes. So it looks like the uh, Nasset blade is changing a little bit. Not quite as sharp as it was through the first seven passes. Um, it's still very sharp, mind you, because uh, my cheeks, it's getting them really well. And um, it's not getting these hairs on me because I can't shave against the grain. My, it, my neck is irritated way too much if I do that. If you can shave against the grain, then if you were on the 11th or 12th shave with your Nasset blade, I'm going to say it's going to probably perform a lot better because you're going against. All right. Uh, this is my lather bowl from, I got it at the Dollar Tree. I wish there was other, some other colors, but this is the only one. I'm kind of liking the shape so far. Uh, the main thing we have here is that uh, we're changing up. I have this Williams Puck that I grated into this bowl and it has been soaking now for 18 minutes. So by the time I get to it here, it'll be like a 20 minute soak. I'm hoping that is gonna be um, part of the recipe to get a rich, luxurious lather from this Williams. Um, every day up to this point, I have gotten uh, fine lathers from it, but only one day had Kind of the, what I'm what I'm looking for. The other ones were very slick, serviceable, good lathers. I'm just looking for that extra extra bit of uh, luxury, if you will. Okay, so I'm gonna splash a little water on my face. Twenty four hour growth is what we're dealing with. I do have uh, I'm using cold water and I am shaving. The water is um, hard, hard water. Okay, so I want to take the brush out of the water, shake it, swing it back and forth so that I get as much of the water out as of it as I can. I'm going to take this bloom water and pour it down the drain. And 20 minutes soak, it looks like. All right, one of these days I'm gonna do an experiment and pour some of the bloom water into the shave bowl, lather with that and see if that helps me. All right, so now we're ready to load for about 20 seconds. That seems to give me enough lather to do what I need to do. So I'm gonna wait until the counter turns to a zero and there we go. Ah, it's 40, so we'll just stop when it hits at the five minute counter. Great thing about hard soaps, you can shred them with a cheese grater and mold them to any type of container you want. And there we go. 
Now in the past, I've kind of done a swipe and gotten some of the uh, excess, but you know what? That's kind of airy. This time I'm not going to do that. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this guy's bloomed for 20 minutes. We'll see if the lather I get is different. All right. I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this uh, this part of the lather right here because we're not adding water to it yet. The only water there was what was uh, just kind of in the bristles since I shook it out. And as you can see, we're actually, you know, stirring up a good bit of stuff. Maybe I've just been adding water a little too fast. Who knows? Or too early. One time I slowly drizzled it in, but it still wasn't quite good. Big splay on this when you're mixing. Then when it kind of starts looking dry and it stops accelerating and building the kind of early lather, then I stop. Take my medicine syringe. It's got a two teaspoon capacity. And so we are only going to add, uh, I think one and a half. Let's try one and a half teaspoons of water to this lather. We'll see what happens. I've gotten a rich lather a few times before and many times it's when I go back kind of to the puck after after I've kind of gotten a thin lather and then it's just wonderful and magic. Um, it also may be that William's lather is better on the face instead of in a bowl. So maybe there are some soaps like that, you know? See if we can make a dense lather out of this. The um, another thing to pay attention to, you know, a lot of times the peaks of the of the lather are something to look at, but with this one, it's really not that because it it can be a it kind of in a, is in a firm state from my experience and then it's too thin um, so you really need to use the finger test and to uh, to take a look at the creaminess and I need to remember where to stop to show you a little bit about what we're getting. Just look at that guy. I've been getting a little cushion lately with my, you know, recent strategies, but then I just have happened to have added just a little too much water. And the good news is, even you know all the shaves I've done, the slickness has just been there. This is a slick soap. Anybody who denies that, 
they've just maybe they've really botched their lathers or you know something like that well, this is looking really good okay just a little bit more and there we go that's a teaspoon and a half last time I meant to add a teaspoon and three quarters but I overshot it by a little bit and so I ended up kind of getting the same lathers that I had in the past and I think maybe the three quarters is probably not lean enough anyway and that's why I measure so I cannot repeat myself looking pretty good it looks thick and rich like a good barbecue sauce the nice thing about this bowl here is I can kind of rotate it and bring the stuff down from the walls I mean look at this that looks really good I may have I mean this may be the one you know this may be the lather all right finger test ah darn it it's too thin on my fingers that's too bad because it looks great oh well Maybe next time more load time. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to splash my face again and then lather up. I mean, could it be that I need to stop a little earlier with the lather, you know? Instead of one and a half teaspoons total water, should I? Go with uh, just one? I think I'm going to increase my load time next time and then that will increase my soap amount which has the effect of also decreasing your water to make the lather more rich so that might because I I don't know we'll just see how this goes I'm gonna go ahead and get some more lather on my brush scrubbing to remove and clean away oils and dirt around your follicles get some soap around your hairs so that's what i'm using kind of the scrub type circular operation now i've done enough of that so i'll switch to more of a painting and this is when you can look and see about the thickness of your lather actually this looks just right. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. Very nice. You know, it doesn't have to look be all thick like Santa's beard. That's what you have to do if you use the cream in a can. That's the only way it comes, but that has a propellant in there and alcohol, other things that dry your skin out. This, the artisan soaps of today are much kinder to your skin, nourishing, hydrating, different kind of oils and butters and good things for your skin. So then this is the 12th use of the Nasset. I'm not getting a lot of glide right now. I mean, but it's, it's going to work. What usually happens in this case is that it's uh, I have the second pass to look forward to for the glide. 
because this is almost just a clean your face off. There wasn't enough. Uh, I mean, I'm sure this is not what's going on, but this is what it feels like. There wasn't enough soap product on there to both clear away my face oils as well as um, provide slickness and glide for the razor. Then once I bring the second pass in, just taking care here, very light pressure. Uh, once I bring that second pass in, I don't have, I'm not fighting those oils anymore. And so it can be purely dedicated to my, uh, the slickness. That's at least kind of how I'm envisioning it. It may have no basis in truth. A uh, little rinse here. Like I suspected, not very much of a creamy feel. I'm going to dab away a little bit of the excess water. And let's go back to my bowl and gather up some soap. Looks like we're going to have plenty of soap to do the job. Scrub in for the second pass, don't need a lot. Now I'll switch to painting motion. What we're doing is just putting down an even layer. Kind of the thickness that you like around you. And not really doing a splay very much. The brush kind of keeps that kind of shape. And then if you end up with a lot of excess right here, you can kind of do a roll on your face and put it down and smooth it out. And that looks good. There we go. Not really stretching out my skin, just kind of holding it so it doesn't move. Because this is where I have to watch my angle. And I found that for me, the secret to this razor, it was too rough at first. But the secret is uh, on the second and third pass to have the angle a little closer to your face than you did on the first pass. Now, if you've got tougher skin than me, it's not going to, you know, you're probably fine however you want to do it. But if you've got skin like me, and you use that angle with a maximum bite, then you're going to end up with irritated skin that is dreading the third pass. And that's what happened to me my first few shaves. Um, this razor, the mat, is it's a polished, uh, it's not a polished version. It's, it's got machine marks on it. It gives it some character. It also saves you a little bit of money because the maker did not have to spend time polishing up these to a perfect, a, a nice mirror finish. I believe the, uh, the polished one, and, you, and then if you want to, you can actually polish this yourself. And make it into a polished version um, because it's just pure stainless steel and uh, the polished one's going to be I think 30 or 40 dollars more than than this version I believe is what I what I remember and I'm gonna do a little rinse yep creamier feel that time as I rinsed off the soap and so now we're going to Load up the brush one last time. And this is how much soap we have left right before lathering up for the third pass. That's kind of its elasticity. The, there's a little bit of flexibility. Wow, look, I was able to draw that out pretty well. Pretty cool. 
I did take off the uh, excess water from a few of my spots on my face so it wouldn't be too thin. Switch to the painting fairly quickly, spread out the uh, spread out the lather. Now here's something I've been forgetting to do. You can uh, see what is inside the brush knot. And many times it's a nice dense lather like that. That is just tremendous. So let's give it a shot. I know that I'm not going to be doing a touch up pass that where I would need this lather. Well, lather looks really good on my face in terms of, uh, you know, it's, it's consistency. It's not blotchy, which might indicate a, uh, uh, a lather that needs more water. It's also not transparent in places, which indicates it might be too thin. The, uh, the lines, the grooves, the furrows, if you will, if my neck here was a, a swath of farmland, you should see usually some, some grooving, but the, uh, pay attention to the depth of the grooving and, uh, and the consistency. Look for clumps, and this will help you to gauge how you like your lather. Uh, if you're looking and it's like this, where uh, it, the grooves are very small, um, very even, not lumpy. That might be exactly where you like your lather. Um, if you're, if the grooves are kind of deep, after you've made a swath across like that with your brush, if the grooves are kind of deep and have chunks and, and some furrows are just kind of clumpy, uh, then you probably need to add more water to your lather, but it depends on the soap. Try it all the different ways that you see, and then you can learn for your particular soap, and it may be different. It may differ if you have other soaps, but uh, then you can learn where you like your, uh, your lather to be. And so then you can make a, a judgment call right during the first lather and say, oh, look, that needs more water. But if you drop the water on your brush, kind of reintegrate that water into your whole face, then you can watch those furrows change and, uh, and even out um, or, or move to where you want them to be um, uh, in terms of uh, depth and consistency and all that stuff. And as you can see, I'm using up a little bit of time here. Lather's not disappearing, which some people have complained about. That's because they use that watery, thin lather from Williams and not taking the time to do what I've done and get the thick stuff. Third pass. Keeping that angle, the handle angle. Close to the face. Close to the cheeks, close to the skin to keep it nice and predictable, comfortable. I've got no irritation so far. I guarantee you I'm getting a great shave. It feels consistent, predictable. If I have really gotten an area well, and I want to just kind of make sure I get it even better, then, you know, I'll feel that I'm not cutting any hairs. I'll hear it and I'll also feel it. And then I can raise the handle slightly to apply a little more pressure to the blade to be able to get in there and get those hairs. Nice glide here on this pass. Not like that first one. All right, there we go. I'm gonna rinse this off. So yeah, the same results as yesterday. Uh, these little trouble spot areas right here were not uh, cut um, uh, flush. 
You do see a little bit of length in a few of the tips. Um, you know, I could probably go back and work at them with another touch-up pass or something like that, but I'm just not going to worry about it today. So let's hit it with our post shave. Uh, since Williams is an old school soap, I'm choosing an old school aftershave lotion. It's been performing well. It smells a little girly, so I won't use it again. But it does fade after about a half an hour. Got a little bit of alcohol to it, and so I'm getting barely any stings. A little bit of something maybe over here, and, and now the sting's gone. Helps you to know how you did. Um, if you have a lot of stinging and you don't see any blood or anything, it just means that the um, the, the shave went a little rough. You, your, your pressure may have been too much. Your uh, angle may have been a little much causing irritation. So just watch out for that. And when you can put an alcohol type uh, balm or lotion on after a shave and uh, or a splash, excuse me, the, you know, the typical type of alcohol and fragrance like Old Spice or whatever, um, you put that on and you don't get any stinging, that means you, your, your technique was very good to your face. If you get no stinging and a bad cut, it means you just didn't, uh, you have the right angle and you weren't cutting effectively. But if you get the two things perfectly aligned where you get no stinging or virtually no stinging and a close cut, then that's really the optimum thing because you've got a great cut and your technique was good so that your, um, your, uh, the, the micro abrasions on the surface of your skin were are not there because your technique was good. Nice even performance and the um, uh, and less irritation to the to the skin so there we go all right well that's been applied so the razor uh, did its job another irritation free shave really happy about that that's very cool because this is a, a kind of an aggressive razor it's not as aggressive as the blackbird his big brother from blackland but um but it is aggressive. Um, on the scale of the Gillette adjustables, um, I might put it, I think if my memory serves correctly, maybe about an eight. Maybe about an eight. But then because I changed the angle on it, on the second and third future passes, then it becomes more like maybe a six maybe a five, I'm guessing, probably the six. So it brings it down two notches by relieving the pressure on the edge there and riding the bar. Um, this, is the, this is the top cap up here, and this is the bar, the safety bar. So when you say riding the bar, it means putting a little bit more pressure on the bar by pressing down so that it lifts up, puts less pressure on the top cap. Some razors you have to do the other way. You ride the top cap where you have a more open handle angle. Um, and now this is what helps me with the dart. Could be your skin is different. Maybe whatever blade choice you're using is different. Maybe riding the top cap and having a more open angle is something that works better for you. So just try, try it all out and see what sticks. So here's what's left in the bowl of the lather. And because I squeezed it out of the brush, I don't have too much on the brush. And so I don't feel bad at all about increasing the load time uh, tomorrow to 30 seconds instead of 20. And that may serve me two functions, to increase the amount of lather I get, also to uh, increase the creaminess and cushion of the lather. So happy about that. I will do the, um, um, I'll do a load that is uh, 30 seconds. I'll try to do the 20 minute soak again. Do the same thing there that I did today. And I'll do the one and a half uh, teaspoons of water again. So just that increase in the soak, uh, in, in, the, in the loading time uh, to 30 seconds. Let's just see if that uh, puts me in a good place. I'm on the, I feel like I'm on the verge of figuring out the formula and um, very cool but like I said these are good lathers that I'm making so any of these lathers that I've used 
uh, can you can enjoy um, your your shave with. I'm just being picky, right? All right. Well, there we go. I'm gonna clean up. Now, when I'm done shaving with a bore, that especially one that I'm breaking in, I finish. I sling all the water out of it that I can after I've uh, cleaned it out. Um, gotten all the soap out that I can and then I take it over to the towel and I strop it up and down a good many times and then I uh, It looks uh, a little like this but smaller and then I take my fingers and I kind of separate the bristles kind of push them away from the center so that we can get good airflow and let it dry that way um, spread out those hairs and fibers so that they we don't get any mold or anything like that deep down in the brush because it's not drying enough. Ideally, you want to, uh, ideally, I prefer to use it every other day when I'm breaking it in or using it um, because then that gives it a chance to fully dry between each use. And uh, But this is austere August, and so I'm in ultra nightmare mode where I am using the same blade, razor, brush, aftershave and soap all month long at least i'm using the same blade as long as i can uh, do it until it gets nasty but people have taken these blades to pretty far and right now it's looking pretty good because what is this the uh you know the 10th day it's one third of the way through the month and the blade is still giving me 92 percent baby butt smooth on my cheeks without going against the grain so very happy with the whole situation. Uh, the hydrating effects of this uh, are nice. I might, uh, it's not expensive, so I might try, I might buy the original version as well and uh, for future, for future use. All right. In actuality, this blade's been through two more uses than the current August date because I used it twice before the month started. So we're looking at a 12 use. So in three more days, it'll be making halfway through the month. If the um, kind of the dullness, I say dull, but it's not dull blade, it's, but it's getting less sharp. If the getting less sharpness um, uh, keeps going at the same rate, then I do not expect a problem with it lasting the whole month and still giving me very good shaves. All right, all done cleaning up. Face feels good. Got a nice uh, close shave. Happy about that. Hope there was something here that helped you. This uh, lather is just really close. It's a very good lather right now. We'll try to get it even better. Uh, Sugar Daddy Shaves. Hope this has been good for you. Take care. Good night.